Hi everyone. Uh, today I want to talk about some new work we've been doing to particularly drive creation of IFC files from an external classification system, particularly in the context of an infrastructure project. And I'm going to use a pretty simple model I created of a bridge to actually demonstrate some of these concepts of spatial and system breakdown of a project. So I have a spatial structure that's being shown here in Celebri from the IFC I've created. We're using a classification reference to UniClass to say, well, this is a fixed bridge. Uh, these are uh, uh, spaces for the spatial breakdown of the project. And then we have systems underneath this with a location. So this is like a bridge structure system. Under foundations, we would find we have a concrete foundation system, um, as well as then some spatial locations for foundations at each end. So that's comprising the file and putting it at that end. And then local systems, which might also be um, present at that, that position. We also have the system breakdown, which is shown here in Celebri. Perhaps we could do with a couple of improvements to not show the, the foundation level being here in this particular tree. But again, then we have a foundation system, which is broken down into a pile cap system and a piling system, which is in turn nested into location systems for west and east end piling pile caps. We have similar for superstructure, where, where we just have the girders and then an abutment system, which is nested into the substructure system as part of that hierarchy. So I guess, how do we create this model? And again, our go-to tool is often Grasshopper um, for creating these sorts of information models. And I'm gonna demonstrate that in a second. First of all, we wanted to not try and help users by not making them classify things twice. So understanding what the Uniclass classification might be, and then also having to select what the IFC classification is that's most appropriate. So what we've actually been doing is creating a mapping between UniClass and, and IFC. This could be any other classification system used in, in what well, I'm going to demonstrate um, shortly, but we're focusing on UniClass um, as it's being popularly promoted here in, um, in Australia, at least and in the UK. Um, and what you'll find if you browse through this is that you'll find a listing of all the UniClass products, systems, space locations, etc. And then what we've determined to be the most appropriate IFC concept that, that maps to that. This is the new IFC 4X3, although we can drive um, earlier versions of IFC from this same mapping, as you'll see in a second. Um, and we're sort of considering about whether we'll open source this or how others can contribute to this um, or override particular values if they disagree um, for their own project or client. We're, we're, we're publishing the, that mapping to an IFC XML file, which is on GitHub. We can automatically pull that down in the Grasshopper script, as you'll see in a second. And to have a quick look at this, you'll see we have the classifications published um, within within the IFC file. So we have the Uniclass classification. We then have the concepts we've mapped to from IFC as, a, as another tree of classification that's in this in this XML IFC XML file. And then below this, you'll see where we're mapping from a particular Uniclass code to an IFC concept, which is then used in the Grasshopper plugin um, to determine what IFC class should be used if the user nominates a UniClass classification. So if we switch to Grasshopper now, um, then if you actually press this button, it will actually go and download that IFC XML file from GitHub and save it to a path that's determined within this IFC script. So that's gonna be then saved locally um, adjacent to this Grasshopper script that can be used without being changed if we change the mapping, etc. And then what we have here is a component to read that IFC classification system so we can use it in context here in the Grasshopper script. So now we can actually then say create a reference so we can say if we want to create a complex, uh, we can then go down. This is being built then from that classification that's been imported. And if it's a transport complex, we can say it's a railway complex and we can go down to a heavy rail complex or a narrow um, gauge or light rail complex, etc. So that's created a classification reference that can be used. And then we've now introduced some classification components here to say create an object or a system or a type based of that classification mapping that we showed in the, in the XML, IFC XML file before. So here at the moment, I've actually nominated version of IFC 2X3. So you can see that it's mapping the complex through to an IFC site. Um, it should have the, the user, it still carries the classification reference with it. And you'll see also that it actually nominates it's an IFC railway um, as an object type within the attribute of that site. We can change the version of this and change it to IFC 4X3. And then we'll end up with an IFC railway um, directly um, being used for that version of the, of the schema, seeing that as um, available within that version. So there's similar things. So for example, if we wanted to create a system, 
then we could go look under transport systems and see there's track systems and then there's a rail track system which might be a, a ballasted rail track system so we're going to again then extract automatically that classification reference and then we can create a system based off that classification reference so we can wire the classification reference in here wire the complex in to be the host of that system and then we have created an IFC built system um, that uh, uses that that that, uh, that that nomination so some of the drainage and storm water and other predefined types that exist within IFC have been mapped from from Uniclass and you would end up with a distribution system of a predefined type if you use that type of um, um, nomination as part of that workflow. So coming back to the bridge then, um, I've created a bit of a grasshopper script to, to break to create that spatial and system breakdown. Um, a little bit intimidating at first glance, but it's not too bad once you start to dive into it. So again, I'm here, I'm importing that classification um, mapping and then creating a complex, which is transport complex. I'm creating um, a fixed bridge and then the substructure, superstructure and, and, um, and foundation um, facility parts are being created here. And then we can say, break that down further into abutments or, um, or foundations except, uh, or sub, sub, sub facilities or subspatial breakdown here. And then what we basically have is a bunch of other components here that then go away and create um, the types and the products based off um, off, off the same sort of nomination. So here we've got a Uniclass reference for a product code for a concrete pile. It's then creating the equivalent in IFC, which is an IFC pile type, and then creating the elements. And then we can then associate those elements by grouping them into systems in a hierarchy. So we would see that those piles are directly grouped into the two systems for the eastern end pilings. And then that can be then um, hierarchy link, linked in a hierarchy to an overall piling system or an overall foundation system using the other components that are highlighted in red within this script. So we sort of have a spatial breakdown here where here's the foundation, here's the substructure for the abutment walls, and then we have the superstructure for the super T beams which is being created up here, um, all again being driven by Uniclass. Some aspects we found IFC had, or maybe Uniclass might need some improvements or consideration. For example, the spaces I just used classified as a general space because I couldn't really find um, bridge spaces like um, the, 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 the facility types in IFC nominate nomination of being substructure or superstructure or, or deck or pier, etc. Um, so we're just classifying that at the moment with, the, with a, a generic general space. And it's similar a little bit. Again, I'm not an expert in the classification, so maybe I've just missed some. Um, and that's uh, and, and this script could be improved to better utilize aspects of Uniclass that I haven't identified. Um, just to finish off then, we can show our IFC tree viewer as another way then of inspecting and reviewing that hierarchy. So if I make the tree browser panel visible and then import in the IFC file that comes from say the 4x3 version of this file, then what we'll find then in the tree viewer is we get the hierarchy of this similar to the way that Salibri shows it. We can decompose the facility into the bridge uh, and the bridge into its um, facility parts for foundation, substructure, superstructure. Um, and then we'd start to see the, the, the um, service, um, the, the, the system relationships um, as a reference elements relationship in IFC 4x3 where it references the, the built system, which is then aggregated or built down into, say, piling, and then the piling groups, the, the west end piling and the east end piling as part of that nomination. So that's some recent work we've been doing to try and um, allow Grasshopper to create these information models. Um, the link to how to access these files so you can inspect and try them yourselves uh, will be posted in the video. Thanks for watching.